how to cut your own hair wearing a hair system. This video is in partnership with levividhair.com, which is a brand of hair systems that I absolutely love. I suggest whether you're a professional hairstylist or a barber or someone looking to get into applying these as a service, but also if you are a client and someone who wears a hair system, to me, the poly unit is the best, the thin skin, the most natural you could possibly get out there. It's human hair. The craftsmanship that goes into creating these is second to none. And in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down a few techniques and key things you need to understand when cutting your own hair system. So let's start with the tools you're going to need. Obviously, you're gonna need some sort of a comb like this. This is a, a hair cutting comb. I would suggest clips just to have them. You can get all this stuff on Amazon. Duckbill clips like this or alligator clips just to kind of section the hair and get the hair out of the way. A pair of scissors. Now, these are my own professional shears. You can go online and get reasonable shears that can do the job for under $100. Uh, but if, if you do want to do this, you have to take it seriously and not use like, you know, scissors that like a four-year-old would be using or something or someone in, in kindergarten. And then a thinning shear like this. A thinning shear basically has a bunch of different notches in the teeth. And what that does is it allows for the hair to not get cut all in one solid chunk. This actually only takes um, part of the hair out when you're cutting it. And then lastly, a razor. This is a feather razor. Again, a professional hair tool. All this stuff can be found online on Amazon. And you know, maybe a water bottle. This is a water mister, which comes in very handy. And last, but to me, very, very important, most, most important is a vent brush. All right, this is a vent brush, and I sell these on my website. Um, it's an anti-static vent brush, but I've noticed when combing a hair system, sometimes at first it could be a little bit knotty when it's wet. You don't ever want to take a comb like this when their hair is wet and just start raking it and ripping at your hair because it's just going to damage the system. Instead, using a vent brush like this, because the teeth are much wider and it's designed for combing through hair, you're gonna get a much better result and it's gonna go through the hair a lot easier without ruining or damaging the hair system. So this particular mannequin does have a faded haircut where it does gradually go shorter into longer and most <laughs> most of the time you're not going to be leaving a barber shop or a salon where you got this done and you're going to be, you know, leaving like this. All right. Chances are uh, they're going to give you a nice haircut and make you look very, very presentable. This video is designed to help give you tips in case you get home and you feel like you don't like how the hair is cut or right? A stylist or a barber does the initial haircut and then you say, I want to take the matters into my own hands and I want to cut this myself because I just don't like the way he or she cut it. And that's really, you know, who this is designed for. And, and wearing the hair systems myself, which I've done in the past, I learned a lot about cutting the hair system and little tricks and techniques that really helped, and I wish I would have known this uh, initially, right? So I sprayed the hair down with water. Now we're, re we're ready to start. The first thing you need to, to do is look at where the hair, right, if it is at all separated from the hair system. So I tried to get this pretty much right where the separation was when I applied the, the, the poly unit here, so you can't really see much of a difference, but there is a disconnection right in through here. What you need to do is section off a piece of hair and you need to decide how long you want your hair to be on the bottom, all right? If you are looking for more of a flowy type, you know, traditional undercut or something that really goes back or slicks back quite a bit, 
then you want to obviously leave it longer. If you want something where it is a bit closer to this part into here and you want to have it you know, somewhat textured on top or somewhat short, then you obviously are going to have to cut it shorter. And this, this may happen. You may get home after you, you get your system and you say, oh, you know what? It's just, I don't like the style. It's too long. I wish I could have done something different. And this is where this comes in handy. So taking the shears, right? Now this may be a bit difficult, but I have done it on my own head in the past. Is what you want to do is always remember to leave the front a little bit longer depending on the style you're doing, just because if you cut this front too short, you're just not gonna have any room to style it. So what you wanna do with, this, with the shears is you're almost gonna come in like this. You're going to lay the shear on your skin, the one blade on your skin as a base, and I'm angling the shears going upwards, and now I'm going to cut straight across. All right, so what I've done is I've created a little bit of a longer section right in the very, very front, and it's okay if there's any little pieces of hair because you're gonna go back in to fix those and cut those anyway, but you see what I was able to do. And you can do this yourself by cutting the hair back. Then you're gonna take the next section and you're gonna bring it down right over the previous section you just cut, and you're gonna follow the same exact technique, leave the hair longer in the front, and you're going to cut following that line. Now be careful. The only thing you want to be careful of is you're not, gonna, you're not cutting your hair on your scalp because you can leave a bit of a line in there if you're, if you're actually cutting your real hair, right? You want to just try to lay this to where it's just going to be cutting the hair system. Do it as much as you can to where all the hair on one side is actually cut and it's even and balanced. And this is probably the easiest part. When you're cutting, another tip is that you wanna make sure you're using the tips of the shears, all right, right in through here. Not, you don't wanna go in this way and cut the hair like that, right? When the hair is all the way down the blade, you're gonna cut way too much. You really wanna focus on just using the points of your shears and moving your thumbs simultaneously like this while you're cutting, right? So now what you're gonna do is the exact same thing on the other side of your head. And keep in mind, this also works out if you are cutting someone else's hair system, if you're a professional, right? This is a great way to do it. So I'm going to angle and I'm gonna be cutting upwards this way. And it's the same thing leave the front a little bit longer. If you are having difficulties trying to get it, just use the comb as a tool to really, really help you rather than uh, you know, hurt you. <laughs> and you could also use the shear and the comb like this, right? You can use the shear as a little bit of like a, a ruler or a, a, a guidance tool to just kind of help you maneuver through the hair a little bit easier. So bring this down again from the center. Everything should come over to this point like you did on the other side. And you're gonna follow by putting the point down of the shears and you're just gonna work back like that. Same thing in the front. And now we're just cutting to make sure, yes, it looks like it's a bowl on the head, but again, don't, you're not gonna be wearing your hair like this. So now let's talk about the very, very front. I did mention, and this is why it's important to keep the front a bit longer, obviously depending on the style you want, but with the front, you can comb it straight down and you can hold the hair kind of underneath like this, right? If you're wearing, if you have bangs, you can wear your hair down and hold it straight out this way by looking in the mirror, but really you're trying to mirror what I'm doing by holding the hair straight down and cutting straight across. What you don't want to do is you don't really ever, unless you know exactly how short you're going to go, lay the hair on your forehead and cut straight across. Unless you're trained, <laughs> unless you know exactly how much to cut and where to cut or else it's going to be very, very risky and it may not turn out so well. All right, so the same thing here. 
you want to cut all the way into the corners and make sure that you have an even balance and you can pull it down even to check on both sides like this. So the front is going to look like almost like a coming down to a point because it's going to be longest. Now watch what this has done when we comb this back, all right? So we still have our length. We still have some movement. But as you can see, it's now just simply a shorter version of what was there before, a more realistic, believable kind of version. And this may be something that you're looking for. And from the side profile, you know, it works out to where you don't have the hair all hanging down this way. Now we're not finished. <laughs> we still have to layer. Now this is where it gets a bit difficult and a little bit tricky when you're trying to layer your own hair. What you need to keep in mind and consider is, you know, what kind of look do you want? What, what, what's the finished look you want? Because remember, we have this hair that we just cut and we haven't even cut the back yet. So you're going to see something like this, right? It's going to come to a point because you obviously only cut the sides. So what I suggest doing is maybe taking a hand mirror or something and you can look in the back so you can see what's here. So you're going to need a comb to comb this straight down. You're going to have to probably put the comb down, hold the mirror with your hand to look, and then the same technique or the same method is to cut straight across, just like you did on the other side, right? And then you can switch body position or switch hands to uh, do this on the other side as well here so it comes out even. It's okay if there comes to a little bit of a point in the middle. That's totally fine, but you're going for something that is going to help uh, create more of a balanced even looking through here. So what happens is, is the hair is very, very thick. On a lot of hair systems, sometimes it's almost too thick, right, depending on the different type. I noticed that the poly bases and the ultra thin skin it's still very dense, but it looks, it looks the most natural to me, but it's still very, very thick. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you're layering the hair. So when you're layering your hair, the best thing I could suggest doing while doing it yourself is to start in the very back. And what you're going to do is you're going to comb the hair almost like out from your head to where you can just see it in the mirror like this. All right, and then what you're going to do is cut that top, not super short, but you want to cut it to the desired length that you're looking for, keeping in mind where you cut this, because everything has to be balanced. Once you have that cut, that's what we call your guide. So now you've got the hair locked in right there. As you can see, I'm going to take my shears and I'm going to cut straight forward to cut it across. It's going to get easier as you get closer towards the front, but what you're really trying to do is you're just trying to create a more balanced look right on the top of your head. And anytime you want to alter your system or you want to make any tweaks to it, you need to make sure that you're following, you know, a consistent pattern of how you're cutting the hair. And you also need to know what the end style is going to be, right? Like I mentioned, so the top is done and now, we have to work on the corners. Now the corners of your head are where the, it rounds right into here. And what happens is if it's not layered, even that little bit of hair right in through there can actually make it a bit too heavy and it'll prevent it from having a nice flow or a nice layer type look. So all you need to do is comb the hair straight out from the head as much as you can on an angle so the hair is like this. And if you're doing it on your own head, you'll be able to clearly see that corner right there. And then we're pretty much done on that side. You do have to do that on the other side <laughs> in order to stay balanced. So, you know, that's another key to any haircut in general, not even just a hair system, <clears throat> is balance. You need to make sure that the haircut really is cut to the style or else the style this is, and this is a big problem. This is why a lot of people, their hairstyle isn't just laying right, is because the haircut is not balanced. It's not even. One part is layered more than the other, or, or it's not layered enough, you know, and it does cause some issues. 
So what you need to do is just really take your time and go through the entire haircut to make sure that everything is right. So now that we're done, for the most part, with the haircut, uh, you can go back in and just comb the hair straight up in all different directions and use, use your, your fingers to feel, right? That's the whole point of, of, of this when you're doing it yourself is really just to feel and, and you will know your own hair, trust me. You know your hair type, you know how your hair should look, right? If it looks a little too dense or too thick, maybe you have to choose a different type of unit. Maybe it's not the right one for you. You have to go for a different type of haircut. I've even, even on myself, when I was wearing one, sometimes it was just, I'm like, you know what? This is not laying properly. And it's simply because I needed a different haircut, right? I needed a whole new haircut uh, to make the hair system look and lay much better. And I've noticed that, you know, when I went shorter, it actually was, was better for me. So if you are looking to go really, really short, you can do the same technique. It's just, you're gonna be cutting a lot more hair and you're going to be styling the hair a little bit differently. Now let's talk about the blow dry. So when you blow dry the hair, again, it all comes down to how you want to wear this. I like to blow the hair forward. I like to blow it back in all different directions. So just watch this real quick and then we'll look at it when it's fully dry. All right, so you may not be wearing your hair this way in particular, but what you wanna do is you want to customize your haircut. And that is where the blow dry comes in and that's where everything that we did prior to this is gonna come in handy because now it's all about how thick is it and making it look even that much more natural. So you can, as you can see, I did blow dry this to look somewhat like a mushroom haircut, right? But that is where you truly can see and feel how thick it is by just having it all lay flat and straight down like this. The thinning shear, the thinning shear is gonna be your best friend, especially when you're cutting your own hair. So what you wanna do is you want to just run your fingers through it and feel for that thickness. And what I like to do is, even, and you can do this yourself, is just start to really lightly chomp towards the ends. Because what that's doing, it's softening up the ends here so it's not such a harsh line, right? Same thing, you can do it with a mirror in the back. And what this is doing, it's, yes, it is cutting hair, but it's also cutting it in a much softer way. It's removing that weight. That's why these are referred to as thinning shears. And hair systems, you know, or hair units definitely, and I've seen tons, can be almost too thick and it looks very, very unnatural. And that could be fixed by doing something like this where you're removing a lot more of that weight. And you can see what's happening right away. Even though we have the hair going forward, it's actually allowing the hair to have a much more natural kind of flow to it. What do you do when the top, because it's not just the sides here, it's the top too. So what I like to do is I like to take little twists like this and just chomp into it kind of midway through or halfway through the hair shaft, right? And, and these scissors, again, are designed to remove weight and remove bulk from the hair. And don't be afraid to get rid of that heaviness because that's what's preventing your hair from either looking natural and it's also preventing your hair from having uh, the kind of hairstyle you want, right? So I do this, I've done this on myself, I do this on clients, and it's just a great way to uh, help the hair system look much more natural. The razor comes in handy. If you feel that you want a really, really PC textured look, do it on dry hair, you're gonna lay the razor on the hair shaft the more you turn in like this, the more you're gonna cut. And if you lay it flat, where it's just barely cutting hair, you can turn the finger, the hand and more, you're gonna cut more hair. But this is actually good for creating uh, more texture in the hair. And you can actually even do a whole haircut. And you've probably seen people, professionals or stylists, barbers using razors to cut the entire head. And the reason they're doing that is because not only is this taking off length, but it's also making the ends a bit more wispy and it's taking out uh, a lot of that density that 
really prevents the hair system from looking natural. So uh, even as you can see here, with all the kind of cutting and all the work that I've done, this does look a heck of a lot better, even when it's down like this. It looks more believable, more realistic, and a lot piecier. Now, again, you probably won't wear your hair down like this, but this is just a really good option if you want to wear a bit more of a messy, textured look. And again, I want you to really take note of how natural this hairline is. Um, I, again, I tend to try to really focus on making the hairline look as natural as possible. And that means, you know, inconsistencies. It means maybe having some hairs kind of coming down like this, which is really just a hair that's stuck on the glue, <laughs> which, which happens. But what really is you don't want is you to have so much hair on the top of your head that it looks like you're wearing a hair system. And that's, that's the whole thing. And I, unfortunately, I do see a lot of that. Uh, and it does come down to the density you're using. It comes down to the thickness. But you may like that, and that's totally cool. I prefer, again, a more natural kind of uh, look. So now the hair is much more flowy. It has a lot of an easier consistency to style. You can apply any sort of product to it, and you are good to go. If you are looking to purchase a hair system from levividhair.com, use code THESALONGUY, all one word, and that gets you 15% off, which is like kind of a big deal, and it's a really awesome savings. Reach out to Levivid Hair on Instagram. Uh, the woman, Tina, she's very, very helpful, very smart, very knowledgeable. If you have any questions, just go to Levivid Hair, look them up on Instagram, and follow them, right? And you can even tell them the salon guy sent you. Talk to Tina, you can DM them. She's very, very, uh, very responsive, and they're a great company to work with. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you guys thought of the video, and I'll see you next time for more videos with a salon guy.